everybody! How are you tonight? Welcome for Cambridge IELTS and TOEFL classes. And the topic of tonight is dependent prepositions and prepositional phrases or prepositional sentences. So, before we even start our class, please click the link below and subscribe so you can see the next videos I prepared for you. Alright? So, all this material belongs to the C1 and C2 levels of English. So, in other words, if you need to score like 110 or 115 at TOEFL IPT, and if you need to score above 7.5 in the IELTS exam, so this is the right class for you, okay? So, let's start. First expression of the day, enforce. Again, enforce. We can say that the new law is in force, or a new rule, a new procedure, a new company's policy is in force. So basically, what I'm telling you, it's valid. You have to abide by the rules, you have to obey this new law or norm, alright? It's easy. So, the second one is in full. Again, in full. So, if I ask you to write your name in full, basically what I'm telling you is, please, not to use any contractions. If your name is long, I want the whole name on that piece of paper. So usually we say that uh, for people who are signing documents or any important material such as uh, documents. Okay? Anyway, if you use the third expression, in any event, uh, in any event basically it's used when it doesn't matter what happens, the outcome will be positive. For example, I really want to watch the Beethoven's Fifth Symphony tonight at the theater, but it's raining. But I'm going to be there in any event. In other words, it doesn't matter if it's raining. It could be raining cats and dogs, but I will be there for Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. So in any event, I'll be there. All right? Uh, the fourth expression, in arrears. Again, in arrears. Usually, if you pay your bills in arrears, you delay the payment. So basically, you didn't pay on the right date. For example, last month, I had to pay my water bill in arrears because I didn't have any cash on me. And then, because of that, I had to pay interest. So, I paid in arrears, it means I delayed the payment and I had to pay interest, alright? Next expression, in a nutshell. So, usually, in a nutshell means to sum up, to cut the story short. For example, yesterday I woke up late and my car wasn't working, I had to walk to work. And I got really tired. My boss was, went bananas with me because of a random thing. So, in a nutshell, I had a horrible day. I felt jaded. Okay? In the end of the day, I felt jaded. Completely exhausted. Alright? Next example. In a jiffy. Again, in a jiffy. Basically, it means I'm in a hurry. You know? I cannot wait long, so I had to go. I'm in a jiffy. I have things to do. I have things to get done, so I'm in a jiffy. All right? Now, next one. It's a very funny one. It's in a fix. Or, you can even say in a real fix. If you are in a fix, it means you might have done something wrong or something you are not supposed to. So, if I was talking to another girl and my girlfriend saw that, probably I would be in a fix because when I went home, my girlfriend just started giving me all that going on and on and on. So she started rambling on because I am in a fix. I'm in trouble. It's the same thing. In a fix, I am in trouble. All right? Now, when you buy things, you can buy it in a broad range. So in other words, in a large variety. For instance, if I want to paint this room in a blue color, <laughs> I go to the paint shop and ask the guy, please, do you have any blue shades in that? He's going to tell me, all right, we've got it in a broad range, so probably 5,000 different blue shades of colors. So I have the options in a broad range, all right? 
And the last one is in the market for. So if I'm in the market for something, it means I want to buy something. For instance, um, I'm in the market for a new cell phone right now. In other words, my cell phone is outdated and I'm in the market for a new one. Okay? Now, let's move to on. So basically, dependent prepositions and prepositional phrases are formed by prepositions such as in, on, for, about, at. So this is just the first part. In the next classes, I will teach you the other ones, all right? So, on my part, in other words, in what depends on me, I have a decision, or I agree or might disagree with you. So I say, on my part, you can leave. But on my boss's part, I don't know, you have to ask him permission for that, okay? So what depends on me, it's fine, but I haven't got the final word, I'm not the top brass, do you know what I mean? So, the next expression, on leave. If I on leave, it's a kind of a license that I can be off, like to have a day off, or a week off, a month off, depending on what I agree with my company. So if I'm on leave, it means I'm basically not working. There are two types of leave. That is a paid leave, so you stay home and get paid for that, like when you have children, or you're on leave because of a sickness or illness, and then you have an agreement with the company, you're going to stay at home and not getting paid for that. Okay, it depends on the country, it depends on the company, all right? Next expression, on good terms. So if you're on good terms with your friends, it means you have a great relationship at that particular moment. So I say, now I'm in good terms with my boss, but two weeks ago I wasn't. So it means now we get, we're getting along well, we're having a good rapport, all right? But previously we didn't have that close relationship, all right? Next one, on hand. So if you have some tools on hand, it means they're available for your usage, so you can use them 24-7, okay? So you have them on hand. Anytime you want to use them, they're going to be there for you. Now, on tick. If you pay something on tick, it means you don't have cash, use credit. So probably you're going to pay after 30 days or 2 weeks, so you don't pay it up front because you haven't got cash for that, okay? So you're paying on tick. Okay? The next expression, on call. So basically, on call, you have to work if it's needed. For instance, I might be a doctor, and I'm at home with my cell phone turned on, and if somebody calls me, I have to rush to the company in a jiffy, and, you know, I have to work because I'm, I'm on call. So I have to be very attentive to my mobile phone, and they need to pay attention that if they need me, I have to be available for them, all right? Usually, if I'm on duty, it means I'm inside the company doing overtime. So, for instance, if every employee, have, uh, every employee has left like by 6 p.m., I'm still in the company like overnight and I'm working, I'm on duty. So anybody there can count on me to solve problems. I don't go home, all right? That's basically what it means, I'm on duty. So I'm the guy in charge of my area, of my sector, at that time, all right? On a budget, if you are on a budget, that means you haven't got much money available to spend. So the money you have is only to pay for basic bills, such as water, electricity, or rent. But you haven't got any money to buy ice cream or extra stuff you need, make perhaps a book. So that's the meaning of being on a budget, you know, not much money available. Uh, I hate to be on budget, that happens sometimes, right? If a product's on display, it means a lot of people might touch the product before you buy it. It's on display, so you can touch, you can see how it works, for instance, a cell phone. You want to buy a cell phone, so you, you get it in your hands, you touch it, and then you might get a huge discount if you buy that specific product, because it's been used, all right? On a spree, on a spree, you leave your home like crazy. And we usually use that when you want to spend a lot of money, you want to splash out. So you go on a shopping spree. So you just run to the shop and you buy a lot of stuff, splashing out all your money, okay? 
That's the meaning of to be on a spree. And on parole, it's a terrible thing because it means that previously you've been in jail and you've been released from jail, but they're still watching out for you. So you're in the streets trying to live your freedom, but if you commit any crimes, you're gonna get back to prison. That's basically what it means. So guys, that was our very first class on dependent prepositions and proposi prepositional phrases. So if you haven't understood anything that I said, don't you worry. What you can do, you can send me a message in private. So click the link below, subscribe to my channel, and you can talk about those words later. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you next class. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.